Hello everyone, I'm Shikha Garg and I'm a watercolor artist and an art teacher. Today I'm going to be painting this still life of a very humble subject, the garlic. Let's begin. I start with drawing out the major shapes of the garlic. As you can see, you know, first I start with the outlines and uh, lightly draw them out. Keep my lines uh, fluid and soft and light. I can go over them again and make any corrections if needed. Once I have my basic shapes of the three garlic, I draw the two small pods in the front, the garlic pods. You can see the reference photo on the top right corner and uh, it's something I just took in uh, daylight just on a white surface. So I kind of found the little reflections and the shadows very interesting in this one. So I chose to paint it. The light is coming from the left side. So we're gonna, you know, uh, paint it like that just as in the reference photo. So now that I have my uh, composition satisfactory in place, I go over the entire thing making corrections to my drawing as you can see and uh, darkening the lines I'm happy with. Then I go in for the details, maybe just drawing lightly some of the lines on the garlic just as placeholder. Um, I would suggest not going into very great detail because when you put in watercolor washes, um, you know, you tend to kind of hide your lines and you don't want too many pencil marks anyways. But you also do want to kind of place a few important lines as a guide. I also kind of um, blocked in some of the reflections and the shadows very lightly in the drawing, just as a guide. So here are the colors that I have used uh, in my palette today. Feel free to pause and note them down if you're painting along. Let's get started. I take clear water and lightly wet uh, the insides of the garlic. I also want to kind of make sure that I wet the areas which I want to leave white um, and then I take a very very thin solution of gamboge and uh, add in the warm areas just like where the light is hitting the garlic so a garlic would be you know uh, by and large a white gray kind of thing but if you look closely at any subject uh, you would find many many colors in it so but first we're gonna go in with the yellow in all the garlic pieces and uh, carefully go in and lay down a very thin solution. It's going to dry pretty light, so we, we don't want it very strong. I'm careful to leave um, the areas where the light is hitting the garlic directly uh, because I want to leave that white. So once I'm done with that, I go in with a slightly um, thicker solution of gamboge and orange and um, drop it into the, all the still wet surface of the garlic and let it kind of spread around and mix on its own on the paper and this I'm doing in areas where I want uh, a bit more depth and a little more of shadow where the warm shadows are and uh, now I've taken a bit of uh, cool color which is uh, towards ultramarine and uh, maybe a touch of crimson and I'm adding a little bit of the, you know, the cool shadows to all the areas where I want shadows and depth. And um, I 
still have to work quickly because uh, all of this is done while the previous color was still wet so all the colors there, there are no hard lines really all the colors are merging with the water on the paper and spreading around but at the same time I do not want uh, my darks going over the areas where the garlic's highest points are or rather where the highlights are going to be so I'm trying to leave those white Moving over to the garlic pots in the front, you know the sides of the garlic uh, pots are in shadow so I go in and put in a bit of um, a mix of cool and a warm shadow. Now I move on to um, adding a bit more detail but you know this is more like just kind of establishing the foundation of the next layer. So I've used a bit of burnt sienna to uh, still keep it warm but bring in a bit of the dark uh, working the same way with all the three in three garlic pieces one by one So mostly this is happening where you know the garlic skin has peeled off a bit and I want to show the shadow that it's, uh, it's kind of casting over the garlic. Again um, in this layer, this is the first wash, so we keep our, um, our colors a little watery and not very thick. We allow all of this to dry while I wet the background with clear water. Uh, using clean water helps to kind of keep it fresh and I wet it up thoroughly because I want kind of dramatic background here and uh, I'm making sure that there are no puddles yet it's very very wet. I throw in some uh, orange and burnt sienna and I love the way the color spreads at this stage, you know, um, going where the water will take it. And I drop in ultramarine blue and a touch of indigo at places to give it variation. And um, carefully, since we haven't wet the garlic, uh, the water is not going to flow into it. So carefully we can, you know, um, paint around the garlics to create the dramatic background. You can even use a thinner brush than I have used um, to, you know, navigate the smaller areas. You could use a mop brush or, you know, a squirrel brush to uh, work with this. Try to always vary the color and, you know, uh, even use splatters like the way I'm splattering to create textures in the background. Uh, moving to the other side, um, I'm keeping that a bit lighter as uh, I want the light to be, you know, coming from the left side of the painting. Moving down to the foreground, um, I'm keeping it really light in the first wash because um, I want to save the little reflections of the garlic pieces. Uh, on the you know to sort of kind of emulate the kitchen counter I'm kind of keeping it light it's going to kind of help um, uh, you know adjust it later also adding in a bit of the shadows and merging that with the foreground but it's all very watery and light just to keep it a foundation and notice the white areas that I've left um, but they are softened edges so um, just you know as reflections of the garlic on the white surface 
I'm staying away from very hard lines at this stage. Um, we can come back later and work on that. After the whole thing dries, I go back in with um, the second wash. Uh, make sure your paper is thoroughly dried by now. Um, I take two mixes. One is a bit uh, warm, made of orange and burnt sienna and yellow. And the other one is a mix of ultramarine blue and uh, crimson. And I also have used a bit of teal blue to kind of, you know, add some variation to the garlic. Uh, to give a bit of the greenish tinge that you get sometimes. So I work across the three pieces of garlic, uh, not really uh, working too much on one. It kind of helps to give it a bit of a sink uh, between the different elements in the painting without overworking any one of them. Um, here I'm using burnt sienna. To um, do the shadow area. I don't want it to be a very dark area yet, a dark shadow yet. So I am using a warm shadow and then adding in a bit of tea blue and ultramarine blue to add in the blue depth. My third garlic is going to be the darkest in the far corner. So I'm kind of putting that in now to establish that. And I'm also added a little more teal blue there to give it that uh, depth and variation. I'm staying away from very hard edges at this stage again, and uh, only when I'm pretty sure that there is going to be a, you know, a kind of a boundary anywhere or a hard edge, do I put in the hard lines? But by and large, I'm keeping it soft. The bottoms of the garlic are going to be the darkest because uh, you know they have the least light coming in um, so we will be darkening that considerably so by and large i'm following the contours of the peels of the garlic as well as the surface of the garlic uh, individual pods on it Again, a bit of wet and wet to show the, you know, the space between two garlic pods on a garlic. Coming down to the garlic pods, um, I'm using a very light color. Uh, and again, you know, using a light color will help because it's not going to be pasty and um, the sec since it's a second layer, it's going to add that depth to it anyways. Working down now into details, I'm adding a bit of a purpley shadow there. Um, I, love, I love shadows. I mean, I, I'm still trying to get them to be beautiful, but you know, it's an ongoing process. And, um, but the one thing that I love doing is adding in different colors into a shadow. It makes it more interesting, you know, rather than a flat, dark shape. So working in the area between uh, the first garlic and the two pots, um, again, that's going to be a very dark area. And keeping in mind that we need to also follow tones and tonal values, um, I add in a kind of a darkish shadow here. Um, if you see the reference photo, the shadows of all of these pieces, individual pieces, are kind of dancing and merging together. And uh, that's what I loved about this composition. Um, so I am carefully trying to make sure I uh, follow that, the shapes of the shadows and the reflections and kind of, you know, try to keep them all 
uh, true to the shapes of the actual objects. Adding a bit of warmth to the shadows uh, on the edges helps to you know disperse it you know um, and not make it too sharp. It's nice to let the shadow, uh, when you're painting shadows, to let the color kind of go on to the subject a bit, to kind of merge the two together so they don't look like two cut out pieces of each other. So here I've decided to put in a slightly dark shadow as this garlic is kind of away from the light the most. At this stage, you can dry the entire paper and then get back to um, doing some more details and then maybe the third layer. Yeah, I think I have used a bit of indigo and ultramarine with a touch of burnt sienna for the darker stars. And um, um, you know, the one thing I try not to do is uh, do too much in the detailing because yeah, one can tend to um, make it look very artificial if one does too much detailing. I think I'm just trying to establish the reflections a bit more. If you guys have any more questions or any comments or if you have any questions regarding the colors or the process, um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and uh, I'll be answering them if any. I go in with a deep, uh, you know, to deepen the shadows now at the second stage and with a thicker mixture of the same colors I used earlier. It'll be good to use a, a soft brush but with a good point at this stage because you know uh, you can kind of go into the smaller areas as well as lay out washes. Now it's just time to do some more detailing um, and establish the shapes a bit better, the shadows, the highlights and the edges. Now going back to the background, um, I thought, you know, that the background was a little too mild, and uh, I've gone with the gone gone in with a bit of more um, bright ultramarine uh, by itself to kind of you know brighten up the left side of the painting. And back to the garlics to add in you know a layer of contrast and tones. Uh, darker tones to establish again dark and light. Um, in this composition I felt that the one thing that was uh, uh, very striking was the fact that it's a white garlic, uh, you know, mostly white with, uh, so the shadows need to be very prominent and uh, striking for it to work as a composition. I 
I used a bit of dry brush on that stalk there. The small garlic pot in the front. Um, and I didn't fidget too much with it because I want it to be light as it's closest to the light. Uh, at this stage I am deepening in all the shadow parts gently, um, delicately because I don't want to overdo it. It's good to step back from your painting once in a while to uh, look at it from a little far and that kind of helps you see the tones and the the you know the different uh, light and shade that you have created in a better light and uh, helps you kind of get a sense of what you're doing Okay, um, going back to the foreground, uh, this was a tricky bit but fun also of course. Um, I'm softening some of the reflections with clear water first so that um, you know I don't get any very hard lines out there when I paint in and, and I soften the reflections only on the side where there is shadow not towards the light so that you know I get to see both hard and soft edges in the reflections. I'm keeping them pretty subtle because I don't want very hard reflections out there. I want the shadows to kind of uh, dominate but at the same time have these uh, very light soft white reflections. I'm going into the biggest reflections and uh, adding a bit of shading because the garlic is going to also cast its shadow downwards. I'm strengthening the corners uh, with a little more of the blue and a bit of a touch of orange. Um, this combination, color combination is one of my favorites because uh, ultramarine blue is a granulating color and just you know creates these beautiful granules and textures on paper. Just adding a few touches here and there with the brush moving from spot to spot to kind of you know, bring the whole thing together. I'm using a bit of white gouache here. Um, you can also use Chinese white from your watercolor set. Um, and I'm using it very very sparingly um, just to kind of bring back some of the little little lights that I wanted that I might have lost. There's a little fold of uh, the garlic peel that I want to have it catch the light so I just went in there with the gouache but you know um, as you can see the the first garlic and the two garlic pots are almost white from before I haven't really painted much over them so that I can keep the basic paper white I'm taking a bit of um, burnt sienna and uh, maybe a touch of uh, ultramarine with a rigor brush and 
you know these little lines that garlics have on them I'm just kind of subtly suggesting those without really drawing dark lines they're almost like they're translucent lines and that's it we're done um, do paint along and feel free to pause and you know um, look at things again and I'd love your comments in the comments below and if you want to see future uh, videos like this would love your suggestions about subjects in the comment box and um, if you if you'd like you could subscribe to my channel and put on the notifications so that you know you're informed of the next videos I, I post thank you so much for watching bye bye